So about a year ago, I did a video on three fragrances that you should have for each season, 12 fragrances in total, kind of a, a way for you to build up a really nice collection. And that video did really well. And I think it helped a lot of people out, especially more so the beginner crowd, because if you think about it, it, it makes it easier. Instead of doing a video on 12 fragrances that I think every man should have, uh, I, I do that, but breaking it up into seasons, and it makes it a lot easier to digest. You know, when you're new and you're getting a whole bunch of information thrown at you, different fragrances, different notes, different brands, it's very hard to comprehend. And I still remember that when I was first starting out and trying to figure out what worked for summer and what was a, a winter fragrance is something that I had no clue at all. And it was very, uh, it's honestly kind of stressful. So we're making it easy, easier even this time with two fragrances per season, eight fragrances total. These here are, are ones that you can build up your collection with starting right now, and you are going to be very much ahead of the crowd. Like, uh, these aren't just your, your typical ones. They're, they're ones that have a little bit more going on. So, in a way, it could be for the beginner, but also could be more for the intermediate or even advanced person because some of these are not gonna be your, your typical choices here. I will link them up down below to discounters. I always recommend going so and using those links. That way you can get the best deals possible on these. This is important, let's just go. We're gonna start with spring. We're, we're close to it, right? Still winter time and we'll cover that at the end, but man, it feels good to be getting closer to spring with each passing day. So again, two for each. We'll start off with Hugo Boss Selection. Musk, pink pepper, and grapefruit are some of the main notes. I really, really enjoy this one. It's clean, it's musky, powdery, a little bit spicy, but ultimately very smooth. And the powdery nature that it gives off kind of gives it some dimension. So it's not super, super bare bones and basic. There's a little bit more going on than meets the eye or meets the nose, maybe the first time you smell it. The more you wear it, the more you pick up on different nuances here and there, and it's one that I've come to appreciate more and more, and it's only like a $30 fragrance or so, somewhere around in there, very affordable. It's been around a while, nothing new here, nothing that's like a hidden gem, but it is easily overlooked. It's not loud, it's not gaudy, it's just Hugo Boss selection. Very classy looking bottle, and I just think it's easy to gloss over, but I encourage you to give this one a shot. Very well deserved, and hey, it definitely gets the pass for me. It's super pleasant, super wearable, and it's very refreshing for springtime. The second spring fragrance we're gonna be covering here is Bulgari Man Wood Essence. So this one has cypress, cedarwood, benzoin, lemon zest, and my favorite, citruses with sugar. Yes, seriously. Citruses with sugar. Wow, it, it really is. It's citruses with sugar, man. For real though, I love it. Okay, this is what's crazy, is the amount of depth behind this one too. You get that nice, bright, zesty lemon peel there. You get the citruses, a little bit of a sweet touch. There's this creaminess, there's this benzoin dusty sweetness, there's woods, obviously, cypress, cedar wood in the base. It has a whole bunch of layers. Like you can just kind of discover this one and peel it back and keep smelling it. And especially when you spray it on skin and you go through the different stages, this one keeps you hooked from start to finish. This is not going to be the typical spring fragrance that people would probably recommend to a beginner. And I understand that. Again, you know, I kind of want to make this video uh, appealing to a lot. So maybe the more beginner friendly one would be Hugo Boss Selection. Someone who's a bit more intermediate, even to advanced, maybe you would find more enjoyment out of Bulgari Man Wood Essence. So that's kind of how this one plays out. It's a good performer, very wearable, good quality, nice amount of depth and richness. This stuff here is, is quite impressive, really is. Great springtime scent. It's one that puts you in a good mood. We'll go to my favorite time of year, summertime, uh, at least in terms of the weather. Uh, winter fragrances are always, especially lately, really going to have my heart, but you know, summer fragrances is what got me into the game, so I do have still a lot of love for these two right here. One is newer than the other. Uh, we'll start here with the newer one, Aqua de Jo Profondo, Sea Notes, Mineral Notes, Orange, Bergamot. Man, Aqua de Jo Profondo, it's a must have at this point. I've really kind of, uh, I've decided that. I think just about every guy out there should have a bottle of Profondo. If you're looking for a summer fragrance with good performance, great quality, 
great complement uh, getting abilities, great mass appeal, and also unique. Yes, it is a unique summer fragrance, not something that is done a million times. And I know it's an Aqua de Jo flanker, so you're automatically thinking Aqua de Jo, and of course that has been done a million times, literally, um, and also just worn by everybody, but this is quite a bit different. It's more different than uh, Aqua de Jo Profumo to the original. So Profumo still has a lot of that original DNA with the smoky incense. Love Profumo, by the way. You guys know this. Uh, but Profondo, I think, goes even further away from the original here. Other than having aquatic notes, the way the minerals come across in here and everything else about this one is unlike anything I have ever smelled before. Hands down, one of the most unique aquatics out there. One that still just crushes it, though. My girlfriend absolutely goes crazy for this stuff. She loves it. She wants me to wear it all the time. And it just works so well. And a little bit pricey, but definitely worth the investment. That other summer fragrance that we're talking about here is also an aquatic. Uh, this one's Aqua Atlantique. So in a way, this is another unique summer aquatic fragrance. However, this one has the blue fragrance uh, backbone, which makes it less unique. So uh, if you're looking at like the original Bul Bulgari Aqua, that one is very unique. But when you throw in that DNA and put in some blue fragrance and Broxton on top, ultimately that does kind of dumb it down in a way. But this here is still a huge, crazy good fragrance, one that I have a lot of passion for. It's got ambergris, it's got bergamot, sea notes or aquatic notes has this nice saltiness in here. Like the opening of this one is so vibrant, so juicy, so rich, and, and very strong. You do get a lot of that ambroxan right away. It's definitely going to let you know what it's all about right off the top, whereas um, you know some other fragrances in here you have to get through to the base, to the dry down to see what they are. You know this is a blue ambroxan fragrance right off the rip. It's not holding back, but it works so well. It also happens to be one of the strongest summer fragrances that I own out of my entire collection. Seriously, even talking niche, like this one holds up to some super strong niche fragrances. It's mind-blowing. It's killer. 12 plus hours longevity, strong projection, especially in the heat. Another great compliment getter. This stuff all around is amazing, and the best part is it's literally half the price of Profondo, so very affordable. Now we're moving to fall, okay? Uh, we have a couple here that I really enjoy a lot. We'll start with the, uh, I guess maybe the more fragrance enthusiast option in a way, and then we'll get to the other one that's gonna be more, uh, you know, for the beginner, so to speak, although they could go either way. And I guess also for summertime, it's really, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say because some people don't like Aqua Atlantique. They say it gives off kind of a weird smell in the opening, but I don't think that's necessarily an inexperienced nose thing. I th just think it's a skin chemistry thing. So I guess you could say it as Profondo, maybe someone who wants something a little bit more unique and different and Atlantique, maybe more so for the beginner. I guess that's how that could pan out. I digress, but I wanted to throw that in. Uh, for fall, for the enthusiast, we have Moogler Ultimate or Angel Men Ultimate. Cappuccino, fir, cedarwood, hate the atomizers. I wish nothing good on these atomizers, but I wish a lot of good on the scent. It smells gorgeous, creamy, smooth coffee note, nice fur note in here. There's a nice uh, kind of uh, semi-spicy, woody cedar wood buried in the base. I believe there's actually a bergamot top note. I think there is one top note. I believe it's bergamot. This is really, really nice. It's creamy and coffee and delicious and dessert smelling and delectable. and a little bit gourmand, and I love it. The way you could look at this one is it's much more wearable than the original Angelman. Um, you know, that one kind of has, I guess, the tar note. It's coffee heavy, chocolatey from the patchouli, all that stuff, but definitely not for everyone, definitely not for a beginner. This one, I guess, could it's definitely more beginner oriented than the original Angelman, but still not fully. It's not as much as this next one, which we'll cover, but I do think that this one will appeal to a lot more people, both the wearer and the people around you than the original Angel Men, and I think it is a great option. One that's not also going to be worn all that much. Underutilized. If you wear this one out in fall time, you're going to smell unique. And also, I need to mention this too with Ultimate right here. One of the few Angel Men fragrances you can still get on discounters for a good price, 60 bucks. I don't know how long that's going to be. I feel like it's going to end up like Moogler 
pure Havan, pure malt, all of those, pure wood, pure coffee, everything, it's going to be gone at some point. So I will link it down below. 60 bucks is very, very reasonable for this. I would get one while you still can. Now other fall fragrance, Azara Wanted by Night. Absolutely no stranger at all, but you know, I'm not letting that stop me. Tobacco, fruity notes, cinnamon is what it's all about. Strong, spicy, uh, very much a nighttime, sexy, mint fragrance. Great for a date, great for an evening out. It's still fun, still playful. Very, very strong performer here. I mean, it gets the job done, and the price point is a little bit cheaper than Ultimate, depending on what bottle size you get of this one here. I think you can get, get testers for a, a good price. I do believe they do not come with a cap, though. But even still, you're looking at $50 range, something like that. That is very reasonable for this stuff, all things considered. Versatility, performance, which is huge. Compliment factor, which is great. Quality, which is good for the price. And even to some extent, the uniqueness. It is a really well done flanker. Takes that original Wanted DNA, which is very mass pleasing, adds a nice warm spiciness to it and a bit of a kind of mysterious factor, and it works out great. There's really, really great reasons why this one is so hyped up. Fantastic stuff. And to wintertime, uh, we'll start with the intermediate to advanced fragrance first, I suppose. This one's Mercedes Benz Le Parfum. One that is a little bit newer to the channel. So give this one a warm welcome, right? He's just showing up. Not a new fragrance, but new to me in a way, a little bit. This one's got oud, violet leaf. There's a nice amber note in here. Some typical spices, right? But uh, what it's all about is the oud amber mix, which is very well done and something I don't see often. So it has uh, this nice, fresh, ozonic, violet leaf, watery smell, but then it's immediately balanced and kind of challenged by the oud note which is smoky and woody and it gives it just a completely different feel. It's a combination that you wouldn't expect to work well, but it does. You know, it's kind of like a Fahrenheit Le Parfum where it has that violet leaf, but then it has rum and vanilla and suede. So you got fresh and sweet going together. That's what this one has and it works so, so well. The oud is not overbearing. It's still one that's gonna be incredibly easy to pull off in public. People won't think you smell bad or weird because the violet leaf does take control and it, it takes the center stage here in some instances and really punches through and gives off that fresh, ozonic, watery smell. Very unique, a little bit of a challenge for some, but if that's what you're after, it's a great pick. I just think that this is, all things considered, very well done. When you take a look at the price, when you take a look at the fact that it's just a Mercedes-Benz fragrance, right? A car brand. This brand has done some amazing stuff. Club Black, Select, Select Night, uh, Mercedes-Benz Cologne, smells like Dior Homme Cologne. This one here is, wow, very, very nice stuff. And for the more beginner-oriented side, I guess you could say, uh, for wintertime is Gentleman Eau de Parfum by Givenchy. So if you want Iris on a budget for winter, this is going to be it. Of course, you guys know I love Dior Homme Intense big time. I love Valentino Womo Intense big time. love the original Womo. But uh, the problem with those is going to be about double the price of this. Also, especially with Dior Homme Intense, I would place that one to the intermediate side. So that would kind of take the place of Mercedes-Benz Le Parfum here. But with Gentleman, I can put this one, in my opinion, more to the beginner side because it's more vanilla-based, vanilla and pepper with a creamy iris behind it, uh, much more appealing to newer noses. And really, same with Valentino Womo Intense, I would almost actually place that one more towards the intermediate side. Not as much as Dior Homme Intense, but farther that way. I don't know if I would quite place VUI into the beginner-oriented uh, category here. I just think Gentleman, it tackles everything really well for someone getting into Iris. The price point, the smell, the fact that it's not too Iris heavy, nice creamy vanilla, it smells fantastic. The quality of this one is great. Wow, it smells amazing. I could smell this stuff all day. It's a great scent to wear out in the evening. It's a great scent to wear to bed. It's super cozy. Uh, it just came to me. Uh, Dior Homme Intense, Valentino Womo Intense, actually not double the price. The prices are crazy right now, guys. Supply chain issues all across the board. This used to be $50 or $60, okay? Used to be. It's now up to $74. That's the cheapest price I can find it. I still think it's worth $74, but I wanted to throw that correction in there. I'm still trying to get used to this pricing. It's with everything, by the way. It's not just this fragrance. It's not just 
the ones I'm featuring. Prices are going up on everything. It's because of the situation we're in. Unfortunately, it just kind of got to roll with it. I do still think it's worth that $15 price increase. Smells amazing and definitely great for winter time. All right, guys, that's going to have it. That is two fragrances for each season that you should have. Great way to build up a collection here or add some new stuff to your existing collection. I kind of tried to space it out. Got beginner and intermediate slash advanced for each season here. Gives you some options. Remember, I will link these all up down below to discounters. Encourage you to use those links. Get you the best prices possible. And that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.